<laughs> uh, when we began, we, were, we uh, set out to be, and we, and we are, a three-phase operation. We have the full-scale production brewery, we can and keg both. We have a taste room open to the public, in which we're now seated. We also have a wholesale dis distribution portion to the business, where we distribute within about a 40-minute radius of Dayton, and up until about a month ago, it was within that radius, we had over 250 establishments pouring our, our draft beer, and once we, we uh, brought our cans on online, it's been about three months ago, we were well over 300 draft establishments and over 80 retail establishments. And only in the last couple of weeks, we've begun uh, exploring both the Cincinnati and Columbus markets. Some of the, uh, some of the, the higher end uh, retailers, Jungle Gyms and people like that, and some of the better uh, craft beer bars. And some are mini chains, friends of ours that we're doing business with in Dayton, and they have a location in Cincinnati or Columbus, for example. This was the Buckeye Iron and Brass uh, Works, so it was a true metal foundry. And up until re in recent history, its latest iteration, up until about seven years ago, for a period of about three years, it was a nightclub called the Foundry. And when we came along, we spent a year and a half searching for a building. It had been vacant for seven years. And we came in and within uh, five short months, went from earliest construction to opening. We opened in mid-January, and we've been open right at 10 months at this point. Things are going exceedingly well, thankfully. We've been very well received. People are, are digging the, the space, enjoying our, our beers. Bourbon barrels, we have a, a our first uh, bourbon barrel aged beer on at the moment on tap. It's called Whiskey Rebellion. And it's a collaborative effort with ourselves and Century Bar, the C Bar, renowned bourbon uh, whiskey bar. And these are some of the, the remaining barrels. We'll do, um, we actually have plans this, this coming year, 2015, we'll do another barrel aged program for release essentially late fall, early winter again. I'm Jessica. I'm DJ. <laughs> we're, uh, we purchased this new when we opened, and it's actually we're having a part replaced at the moment. Um, but the canning line itself will process about 45 cans per minute, which is very fast for us, um, as, a, as contrasted with the domestic macro brewers. Uh, that's school zone, and they're on the Audubon. But it works. <laughs> it works nicely for us. It's great, and the atmosphere is even better. Cheers. So Ermel's Belgian style cream ale is inspired by a local machinist inventor, Ermel Fraze, who invented the pull tab and the pop top cans back in the late or early 50s, excuse me. And we actually know his son Mark. And when we when we intended to use his fa late father's name in commerce, explain the uh, manner in which we we're going to use it with beverage alcohol, craft beer. And he, he ran it by the uh, family members, and they said not only we're okay with it we'd be honored. So we trademarked Ermel's, and, and to us it's fascinating that in 10 short months, a word like Ermel's, a name like Ermel's, has become part of our daily lexicon. It's awesome <laughs> stuff. These four cans are from Miami Valley Brewing Company, the only brewery historically to ever can beer. They canned from 1949 to 1950, and these are the only four cans prior to our three cans coming online three months ago. So those are the only seven canned beers ever made in Dayton. <laughs> That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. I like Warped Wing because it's adding to the renaissance of Dayton. Warped Wing has taken a disused old brass foundry and turned it into a meeting place for the look for the people of Dayton by brewing great beer here. This is milled then it's it's stored overnight um, in the grist hopper. It comes through and it meets water at a, at a given temperature. Typically it's about 170 degrees. The entire mash, as it's called at this point, which is essentially a porridge of barley or cereal grain, water, 
heated to a certain point, and it's at that stage that the starch that's found in the barley kernel is converted via the enzymes that are in, in barley, converted to sugar. So you have to be able to convert in the mash. You also louder or rinse or sparge in this vessel and pull that, essentially the work, the sugar solution off, leave the spent grain behind, and take it over to the boil cap. And it's during the boil that two things happen. One, it's a sanitizing phase because very little can survive a boil. And two, this is where hops are added. Hops are a spice seasoning and also a preservative in beer. And they create the bitterness. And malt or wort has a sweet character and you have to be able to offset that with at least some degree of bitterness. And that's what the hops contribute. Aromatics, flavor, but most importantly, bitterness as a balance. We, uh, we, we wanted to find a name that related to Dayton's rich history of innovation and invention. And in looking around, of course, there's the Wright brothers. They're, that's too overt. They were, uh, they were teetotalers. We didn't want to go with biplane, also too overt. And it so happened that the Wright brothers pioneered a technology to control the path of powered flight, the earliest airplanes, inspired by a Scottish naturalist in the mid-19th century. And that process they called wing warping. They literally twisted the wings of their earliest airplanes to control the direction of the flight. And we thought, well, wing warping, what if we turn around? Warped wing, that'd be a cool name for an IPA. I said, wait a minute, that'd be a cool name for a brewery. It has, it has Dayton history, innovation, invention, and it's known throughout the world. Who doesn't know flight? And it's fully trademarked at the moment, which sounds corporate, but it's, it was important to us. <laughs>